Welcome to completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, part 32. The method used when I fitted the crankshaft oilers permanently, removing the high pressure cylinder and cleaning up the reversing shaft. I modified these glass oilers in the last episode and I temporarily fitted them to the engine, but I must stress that the fitting in the previous episode was a temporary fitting. Now it's time to fit them permanently. This is a clip from the previous episode where I'm showing the fitting of these oilers just by screwing them into the holes. Then I showed how easy it is to destroy these glass oilers using a pair of pliers. But in this episode there will be no such nonsense, I'm going to fit them properly. The first thing to do is to remove the keeper plates that hold the bearings in place. To initially slacken off the bolts I'm using a small ring key. These are available from Blackgate's engineering. And the good news is they are very cheap and they work. I found it quicker to use my fingers to remove the nuts once they were slackened off. There are two reasons why I need to remove these keeper plates. The first one being to fit the oilers to the plate securely. And I have the ideal tool for fitting these oilers to the keeper plates. It's my Myford ML7R which is right behind me on a bench. Here's the principle. I clamp the glass oiler in the chuck. It's firmly held and then I rotate the keeper plate until it's a tight fit on the oiler. You don't need extreme pressure for this. These oilers are made from brass and the part that screws into the keeper plate is a 5BA thread with a hole in the middle so it will break off very easily if you're too heavy handed. This clip shows why I have to remove the keeper plates because when I fit the oilers they stick out underneath the keeper plate and this is no good. The small thread on the end of the oiler applies too much localised pressure to the main bearings. So remember, before refitting the keeper plates, you need to grind off any protruding brass from the oiler before you do this. I use my 1 inch belt sander, but you could use some emery cloth or even a file. That's one down, three to go, and it's straight onto the second one to slacken off the nuts. And in this clip you can see just how useful these ring keys are. As you turn them over, unlike an open-ended spanner, these automatically lock into position. In this clip I fitted the oiler using the Myford chuck method, and the same as with the first one, I ground off the piece of protruding brass thread before fitting the second keeper plate back in position. Here I'm testing the rotation of the crankshaft and it's a lot freer. When I fitted the oilers in the last episode, the crankshaft tightened up. And this, as I've already mentioned, I believe, was due to the thread on the oiler pressing down on the main bearing top cap. Multiplying that by four, the crankshaft became very stiff to turn. But by doing the job this way, removing the keeper plates, fitting the oilers, and grinding off the excess oiler that sticks through the keeper plate, everything's fine again. Building one of these engines from scratch is definitely not something I would recommend that a beginner takes on. And as is usual, a critical viewer pointed this out to me. And to reply to this particular critic, I'd like to point out that I'm not actually building a Stuart Models triple expansion engine. I'm just completing one that was already built but not finished. During this completion process, I've done very little in the way of machining, apart from the slide valve and the intermediate cylinder that I'm going to remake because I wasn't happy with the one that I made. The low pressure and intermediate cylinders are all in one casting, but the high pressure cylinder is removable to allow you to set the valve timing for the intermediate cylinder. I'm using four Allen head socket type bolts to hold a separate high pressure cylinder to the main casting. And in this clip I'm using a specially modified shortened Allen key to slacken off the bolts. Then I use this Allen key with a ball end to remove them entirely. They make a job like this a lot easier because they don't need to be 100% in line with the Allen cap head bolt. I once had a problem with a small Allen key like this. I was tightening an Allen cap head bolt with it and the ball end snapped off and it stayed firmly stuck inside the Allen cap head bolt. And since then I only use these ball ended Allen keys for removing the parts once I've slackened them off. And likewise, when I've refitted the Allen bolts in position to tighten them, I will use the same modified Allen key that I showed at the beginning when I was slackening them off. I'm pleased to say that I successfully removed all four bolts. When I got them almost out of the hole, I removed them entirely using a pair of surgical forceps. 
If you don't have any of these surgical forceps, I do recommend that you buy some. They're very cheap off eBay and very useful things to have. Once all of the bolts are removed, it's quite easy to lift off the high-pressure cylinder assembly, although it did damage the gasket. An easy fix for that one, I'll just make another. The reversing shaft is quite tight in these gunmetal holders, and I don't really want it to be tight, so I have a solution that should work. Once again, using my very conveniently positioned Myford ML7R lathe, I fitted the shaft into the chuck and used some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper to just reduce its diameter very, very slightly. I fitted the long reversing shaft into the gunmetal brackets and then connected my electric drill to one end. I applied a drop of oil to each of the bearings, not forgetting the unsupported one on the end. Then I refitted the shaft to the electric drill and moved it in and out. And you can see by the black colour of the oil that it's actually running in as the metal wears slightly. Once I'd finished the lapping process, I cleaned the parts thoroughly. And now the reversing shaft is a really good fit in the bearings. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.